Yeah, what's going on guys? Seth Spartan here, nutrition training and hormone expert and Prometheus Pro Bodybuilder with Prometheus HRT, the world's best testosterone and hormone replacement clinic. Use my code SPARTAN to save on either testosterone or HGH replacement therapy or peptides or Anavar, Anadrol, and the list goes on as long as you qualify. Guys, this is the video which you have all been waiting for and arguably this is going to be the greatest and craziest unleashed video for that matter. What am I talking about? Guys, this is trend balone unleashed like you've never heard it before. We're going to talk about all the pros, unbiased, uncensored, absolutely everything you could ever want or need to know for that matter. Take a look at this section. It is filled to the brim. From there, guys, when we're done with the pros, we're going to jump on over into the cons. We're going to talk about all the cons, unbiased, uncensored once again. And the same as the pros, the cons are slam-packed full. And we're going to talk about a lot of cons which people don't talk about, such as Trenbolone actually destroying brain cells and brain tissue. We're going to talk about how it can cause Alzheimer's and dementia and all these other things that people regularly do not talk about in the first place. So guys, we're going to talk about them. From there, we're going to drop down and talk about dosage and dosing. We'll talk about what was used in the medical industry at one point. And we'll talk about, in general, all the information about dosing. From there, guys, you guys guessed it, we're going to finish out with any extra additional information that plain and simple, guys, either people don't talk about in the first place or people don't even know to begin with. So, guys, without any further ado, I'm Seth Spartan. This is Trend Balone Unleashed like you've never heard it before. And, guys, Make sure you stick around for the cons. There's a lot of serious, wicked cons with Trenbolone. And that is why, guys, I'm going to go on record right now, right at the start of this video, and say this. No matter what the legality in your country, Trenbolone is legal in many countries, do not, do not, do not ever use Trenbolone. The cons, the nasty, wicked cons, are just too many and it is too highly unsafe of a compound to ever use safely. What do I mean? What am I talking about? Make sure you stick around for the cons to find out. Guys, again, I'm Seth Spartan. This is Trend Below Unleashed, starting with the pros. Here we go. First pro, anabolic androgenic rating or ratio of anabolic 500 to also androgenic 500. What does this mean? This means when using the scientific uh, anabolic androgenic ratio or rating system, which by the way, guys, is the gold standard, which by scientists have rated every single anabolic steroid in existence. When using this rating system, we see that Trenbolone is five times, that's right, five times more anabolic milligram per milligram than what? base testosterone. That's right. Now, looking at the androgenic, we see also, guess what? In terms of androgenic strength, also five times stronger than base testosterone on paper. All right? When stacking up against testosterone, which is obviously a 100-100, both anabolic and androgenic, whereby Trenbolone is obviously 500-500, both anabolic and androgenic. Now, guys, I want to go right on record and state this because people really don't talk about this enough. When using the anabolic energetic rating system or ratio, whatever you want to call it, oftentimes, guys, anabolic steroids do not fit this rating system when talking about real world results. What do I mean by this? Take drugs like halotestin or others where the on paper anabolic energetic rating system or ratio is what way higher than what it amounts to in the real world in terms of muscle gain or what androgenic side effects. Now, when talking about Trenbolone, and guys, Anavar, for example, would be the opposite of Halo Tested. It's anabolic androgenic rating or ratio, guess what, is below than what its real world actually uh, its effects are. Anavar builds far more muscle. Uh, than its rating would suggest. So halo testing would be would halo testing would be an example of where the rating is largely inflated. Anavar would be where it's too low. It's under the real world. Having said that, guys, there are many anabolic steroids where the anabolic androgenic rating system or ratio is dead on. And guys, with Trenbolone, 
This fits the bill. The anabolic androgenic rating with Trenbolone 500-500 is dead on the mark. Bullseye, all right? Boom. So, having said that, moving on to the pros. Trenbolone is a 19-nor derivative. What does this mean? Guys, we have three different types of classes or main classes of anabolic steroids. What do we have? We have testosterone derivatives, anabolic steroids. We have DHT, also known as dihydrotestosterone, anabolic steroid derivatives. And we have 19-nor, also known as nandrolone, derivative anabolic steroids. So what are these again? Testosterone derivative, DHT derivative, and 19-nor derivative anabolic steroid classes. These are the three classes which encompass pretty much every single anabolic steroid in existence. So when talking about trenbolone, what is trenbolone derived from? Trenbolone is derived from the 19 nor class, also known as the nandrolone class of anabolic steroids. Now, why is this in the pros? This means that in general with 19 nors, less estrogen conversion and also what? More resistant to uh, not just estrogen conversion, but also more resistant to metabolic breakdown in the human body and more likely to give a higher anabolic component. And guess what, guys? We see this with Trenbolone right on the mark. Moving on to the pros. Trenbolone, no estrogen conversion. Trenbolone cannot and will not convert into estrogen most of the time. What? What do you mean by that? This is what I mean. Trenbolone at low or even moderate dosages We'll just say, you know, 500 or less. Typically, Trenbolone will have no estrogen conversion that we can mark. However, however, it does have possible estrogen conversion at high dosages. And there is some evidence for this in practical real world application. What do I mean by this? When talking about people that have used high doses of Trenbolone, a lot of times in Pure Trenbolone, a lot of times we see, guess what? There's little increases in estrogen, thereby what? We can deduce by this, because obviously, guys, in a lot of cases, we don't have the studies to back this up. But in the real world, we see that Trenbolone, when used at higher dosages, guess what? There is oftentimes a little bit of estrogen conversion, all right? And this can actually be argued a little bit based on the scientific uh, research, but it's not much talked about. So bottom line, no estrogen conversion, pretty much at um, low dosage or moderate dosages, but some evidence for estrogen conversion, maybe a little bit at higher dosages can be argued. Having said that, moving on in the pros. All right, this is it. This is what you guys have all been waiting for. Here we go. Extreme muscle builder. Trenbolone is an extreme muscle builder when talking about protein synthesis, nitrogen retention, and overall hypertrophy of skeletal muscle. Now, I'm going to give you guys the dead honest truth. I know somebody who, you know, I know somebody very, very well who has used extreme doses of Trenbolone. We are talking over 1,000 milligrams of Trenbolone acetate per week. And I'm pretty sure this person used even higher dosages than that. And here's the truth, guys. Trenbolone is an extreme muscle builder at low dosages. What do I mean by that? When using Trenbolone at lower dosages, you see the results hit fast, hard. You see large increases in nitrogen retention. However, when you up the dosages, like I told you, I know, like I told you about this person I know, you know, I used to see him pretty much every day used above 1,000 milligrams of Trenbolone. And what do we see with that? Well, I see right away, and he knows this too, that Trenbolone, when used at extremely high dosages, 1,000 milligrams or above, that extreme muscle building effect that you'd see at lower dosages has completely and pretty much evaporated. What do I mean by that? At higher dosages, extreme dosages, Trenbolone no longer outputs this crazy high muscle building effect, but rather uh, it acts more of a hardening agent and 
the muscle building effect is almost completely stopped. Now, Uh, so we'll talk about this more later in the cons, but this is what you need to know guys trend balone is an extremely potent powerful muscle builder period Especially at lower dosages. However, when being used at high dosages You know think 1000 milligrams or above Trend balone no longer is a powerful potent muscle builder. It, it you do not see those effects anymore but rather It is much less effective and, and guys, this would be the take home point. Not that, you know, obviously never do any of this I'm talking about, but this, this just tells you the point. High doses of testosterone are the king of building muscle. Again, don't do any of this, but I'm putting this out here as it is. Testosterone, high doses, it dosages build extreme amounts of muscle. But like I told you, you know, with this person, I know that used a thousand milligrams every, you know, a thousand milligrams plus of trenase per week, that muscle building effect is almost nothing compared to what it was before. So testosterone is still king of building muscle at high dosages. Trend below and kind of uh, does the opposite effect. It acts more like a Mastron or a Winstrel, a harder, more of a hardening effect and less of a muscle building hypertrophy effect at high dosages. Again, nobody's, nobody else is gonna tell you this. Moving on in the pros. Has to be stated also with trend below. And this is true no matter at low or high dosages, guys. This is true across the board. Trenbolone is an extreme fat burner. We are talking extreme fat loss with Trenbolone. Why? Look at the anabolic androgenic component. Not only is it going to speed up your metabolism and the effects on burning calories in the human body in general, but the high, extremely high anabolic component is going to do what? And androgenic component for that matter in terms of androgen receptor site binding. Trenbolone is going to hit your fat cells, especially the ones around the trunk, fat, right around the tor torso, right around the trunk area. And just like Anavar, go watch my Anavar Unleashed video. What's going to happen? You're going to have extreme fat loss. Why? Trenbolone attaches onto what? The androgen receptor binding site on the fat cell tells the fat cell do what? Boom. Release all your stored lipids into the bloodstream to be burnt off. And then the huge metabolic, uh, the metabolic increase you have with Trenbolone is going to do what? It's going to burn those calories right off. And guys, I forgot to say this before with the extreme muscle building effect. In my opinion, in my opinion, the reason that Trenbolone builds muscle great at low dosages and not at high dosages, again, I said Trenbolone pretty much sucks at high dosage, dosages as a muscle builder. It's extremely low in terms of building muscle at high dosages. Why? Because Trenbolone can take the metabolism through the roof to the point where the metabolism is in such overdrive that it's almost impossible to put on muscle. And there have been other people I believe I've heard have talked about this at what as well. Again, we're talking about high dosages. Moving on. Moving on. Oh, and I want to say this with fat burning. In general, guys, I'm not telling you to do this. Again, never use this compound. But in general, extreme fat loss with Trenbolone, and the more you take, the better in terms of fat burning. Again, I'm keeping everything unbiased, uncensored, both ways in terms of pros and cons, even though personally I hate uh, this compound. I don't think that you know anybody should use it. Okay, moving on in the pros. Oh boy, has to be talked about with Trenbolone also. Trenbolone, we are talking what? Extreme, and when I say extreme, guess what I mean? Extreme strength gains with Trenbolone. Huge strength gains, why? If we're talking about the anabolic and androgenic component, not only is it a great muscle builder, again, lower or moderate dosages, but also the androgenic component is huge with the anabolic androgenic steroid, Trenbolone. So we are talking what? We're talking more energy in the gym. We're talking more drive, more aggression in terms of working out. You're able to push harder, push longer. We're going to talk about how, how uh, Trenbolone, just like testosterone, increases pain tolerance by a lot. We'll talk about this in a little bit. But Trenbolone, guys, and, yeah, you know, I think probably a lot of people would not guess this, but or maybe they would. I don't know. You guys tell me in the comments. But a lot of people... 
would be surprised to know that Trenbolone is used heavily, heavily in powerlifting circles, all right? And why? Because of the extreme strength gains. Moving on in the pros, Trenbolone Unleashed. All right, I kind of felt like leaving this out, but we have to say this anyway, because it's true. Trenbolone gives, an ex gives, an, gives a huge, extreme, Trenbolone gives an invincible feeling. Trenbolone makes you feel invincible. Why? Well, apart from the crazy high anabolic ra or androgenic rating, Trenbolone gives you a feeling that you can do pretty much anything. Now, yes, there's going to be some psychological effects because the high androgenic of 500, and usually people are taking quite a bit of Trenbolone. You know, we're talking in the hundreds. So yes, you're going to get a direct effect on the brain, but also this invincible feeling, you're also going to get why. Because when you take Trenbolone, guess what's going to happen? Your strength is going to go not up a little bit. It's going to go way up. You're going to be way stronger, way faster in terms of being able to bench more, squat more, you know, just everything, okay, in terms of, so it's it's because of the physical, but also the effects on the brain we are talking with Trenbolone, it makes you feel invincible, not just because of the effects in the weight room, but the strong, powerful, androgenic effects on the brain. And Trenbolone is a weird one because, you know, like Halotestin, like Halotestin is going to boost up, boost up and give you this in invincibility feeling because of the high androgens, but it's different in the fact that with Trenbolone, uh, you're going you're gonna to feel have a little bit more of that feeling, that euphoric feeling, like you did with testosterone to a small extent. Um, but, you know, Trenbolone could be most compared, still arguably compared with Halotest in, in terms of giving you this ridiculous invincibility feeling, all right? So, anyways, moving on. Now, from this invincibility feeling, you get a huge boost in ego. Your ego is going to go up and not in a good way, all right? And it's also going to make you reckless. All right, you're going to be more reckless on Trenbolone. Why? Because it is an extremely powerful what? Androgenic steroid, all right? So, and, and the thing is, besides the ratio, if we're talking about the invincibility feeling or we're talking about ego or recklessness, it's different than testosterone or even halo because remember of the 19 nor class it's in. And we also have progesterone, some possible progesterone binding with Tremblo. And I think this, this also tweaks the effect on the brain quite a bit. We'll get into it a little bit later. All right, moving on. Moving on to the pros of Trenbolone. Increased reaction time. Now you see this with testosterone, but with Trenbolone, this is like pushed even farther ahead. With Trenbolone, we see increased reaction time. You're more aware, you're more awake. And this also makes it, this also makes explains why it's so hard to sleep on Trenbolone. Trenbolone makes you extremely just aware of your surroundings. It makes you uh your reaction time goes through the roof. Your 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 brain is running on on hyperdrive. All right. Now with testosterone, you can still shut off. With you know, if let's say you're getting, let's say you're, let's say let's even talk about TRT. I'm doing 250 milligrams testosterone cypionate per week through my doctor. Right on TRT on a high dose TRT like that, I notice what I am more aware. I'm quicker. My reaction time is better. But I also notice, guess what? It's harder to initially fall asleep. I don't fall asleep as quickly, okay? Once I'm asleep, it's not a big deal, but it's harder to fall asleep with those androgen levels. Trembolone, with Trembolone, it's to such the extent that it's almost impossible to fall asleep and also, well, stay asleep for that matter, but also guess what? With Trembolone, the reaction time that we're talking about is also boosted way, way up. So your brain is literally being just stimulated, stimulated, you know, in terms of being aware of your surroundings. So increased reaction time with Trenbolone. People don't talk about that either. Moving on to the next pro with Trenbolone. This is a big one, guys. I talked about this with Testosterone Unleashed. Make sure you watch that video as well. 
Trenbolone, extreme increase in pain tolerance. Now, anybody who has used Trenbolone knows what I'm talking about. With Trenbolone, you know, I, I don't think it has to do with just an increased drive, aggression, you know, uh, you know, just more energy. I think that that you know, based on Trenbolone, actually increases your pain tolerance to an extreme amount. And anybody who has used Trenbolone should will know what I'm talking about. Trenbolone gives an extreme increase in pain tolerance. You just, things don't bother you as much. You can go to the gym, you can do the same thing. It doesn't bother you as much. You know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter if you're bulking or cutting or what you're doing. Uh, you will notice your pain tolerance will go up and up and up and up with Trenbolone. Moving on to the pros. Trenbolone, increase in energy levels. We talked about the stimulation to the brain earlier. And this is also obviously in the body as well. It's a huge androgen. Increase in energy levels. Increase in red blood cell count. Nowhere near as much as Anadrol. Anadrol is still the king of the castle in terms of increasing red blood cell count with Acapoi second. Trenbolone is still, I would argue, greater than testosterone at increasing red blood cell count milligram per milligram. So we have increase in energy levels. Increase in red blood cell count. And stick around for this one. Extreme increases in insulin sensitivity. Now, most people on this channel are pretty well uh, are really are pretty well educated on what insulin sensitivity is. But if I tell you something like Trenbolone, extreme increases in insulin sensitivity. What does this mean? This means that your body is more sensitive to the effects of insulin. So when your body produces insulin, let's say, let's say, let's say somebody's taking a big dose of Trenbolone. They go and they have a big spaghetti dinner. Whatever insulin your body secretes to basically pack that blood sugar from the spaghetti into the cells, your body is not going to have to secrete anywhere near as much insulin to lower blood sugar. We see this with a large extent with Trenbolone, much more so than testosterone. And, you know, I think it'd be pretty obvious looking at the anabolic androgenic component of both. And also, guys, I think this has to do with Trenbolone taking your metabolism through the roof. We see that with cattle. Again, yeah, I know humans, humans to animals here, but with cattle that are, you know, vets have pretty much been, you know, using Trenbolone to beef up cattle before they slaughter them. And you know what they see? More muscle, less fat. Even at pretty low dosages for the cattle too, guys. Why? Because not just is it going to build muscle and create protein synthesis, but remember this extreme fat burning effect? Well, that androgenic component, besides the extreme fat burning effect from the trenbolone attaching right onto to the fat cells directly on the androgen receptor site, we talked about how it releases fatty lipids into the bloodstream. Not just do you have that effect, but because that androgenic component is so high, what's it going to do? It's going to increase metabolism in the human body. So we see an increased metabolic rate. And guys, this is one reason why, apart from all of the anabolic steroid effects, this is also why uh, thyroid medications increase insulin sensitivity as well, increase in metabolism. So anyways, guys, giving you more information than you need to know, but I'd rather know it than not, right? So in terms of uh, Trenbolone, extreme increases in insulin sensitivity. This is a good thing. This means that your body is going to build more muscle. Is going to, or in other words, it's, your body is going to be better at building muscle that with a higher insulin sensitivity. And also the more calories you eat, the more likely they're going to go into muscle and other tissue versus fat tissue. Moving on. Trenbolone increases HGH and IGF-1. Now this is mind-blowing. Why? We know in medical literature and medical studies, all right, across the board, period, anabolic steroids that convert into estrogen, anabolic steroids that convert into estrogen do what? They increase HGH levels, which increase IGF-1 levels. Now with Trenbolone, there's a problem. The same scientists and, you know, people in the medical industry we know that anabolic steroids, if they convert into estrogen, they increase HGH and IGF-1, right? But we also know 
that you know the same in the same class in the same medical field we know that what anabolic steroids such as anabolic steroids such as anavar mastron you know anything that does not convert into estrogen it does not increase uh, HGH and IGF-1 levels so when I tell you trenbolone increases HGH and IGF-1 you should be saying wait a second Trenbolone doesn't really convert into estrogen, so why would it increase HGH and IGF-1 levels? There is some evidence of this. Now why? Well, I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna sit here, well, I guess I'm standing, but I'm gonna stand here and tell you straight out the bat, straight off the bat, I don't know. I don't know why this is. And, but again, there is some evidence that, H, that HGH and IGF-1 levels rise from Trenbolone. I would predict that they don't rise anywhere near as much as testosterone, but there has to be more research done on this. Anyways, guys, this is Trend Balloon Unleashed. We talked about all the pros, unbiased, uncensored, absolutely everything you need to know in terms of pros with Trend Balloon. And I did not short you at all when talking about the pros. From now, from here, guys, we're going to talk about the cons, completely unbiased, uncensored. I am not going to hold back. I'm going to tell you guys really and really completely to the point why you should never, ever use this compound. Because the cons, guys, are wicked and nasty, and there is a lot to talk about, especially in terms of brain damage, all right? With Trendolone, nobody really knows about this. Uh, you know, having said that, uh, I did see somebody talking about this. Uh, what's his name? Derek from More Plates, More Dates, I think he, I think it's called. He talked about this, you know, so so, you know, Good job, Derek, for covering this. All right, I have not seen anybody else talk about this besides the scientists who wrote the actual studies talking about this. So keep it up, Derek. Anyways, here we go. Trend Balone, cons, unleashed. Starting with number one. Trend Balone, plaque buildup in the arteries and cardiovascular disease. Now, I know what you're going to say already if you've watched any of my unleashed videos. This is nothing new, right? Trend Balone, the same as every other anabolic steroid in existence. Trenbolone will do what? Cause plaque buildup in the arteries and cardiovascular disease. However, based on what we know about DECA, again, Trenbolone is a what? It's a 19 nor derivative. It's the same class as DECA. What do we know about DECA? We know DECA, in an, in an Italian study, I dropped a study already on my channel, so you can go look that up. But with DECA, in an Italian study, it is suggested that DECA durabolin is 11 times worse for your arteries, blood vessels than testosterone. Now, this could be argued, and I saw some people arguing, I think it was some of the scientists arguing, that this has to do because DECA is a lighter molecule than testosterone. It's going to be much easier to impede uh, endothelial function. Which, go, if you don't know what the endothelium is, go look it up. It lines your blood vessels, all right? So the reasoning behind this arguably is, is that uh, lighter anabolic steroids, DECA, Trenbolone, whatever, any 19 or, they are lighter than testosterone, thereby able to cause much more damage to the endothelium. Now, whether this is 100% true or not, I don't know. But what we do know is, again, in this Italian study, in this Italian study, 11 times more damage to the to the blood vessels, arteries, uh, than testosterone. All right. So when we're talking about trenbolone, trenbolone, extreme plaque buildup in the arteries and cardiovascular disease with trenbolone. All right. And also, guys, moving now, second, you know, onto the second thing from this. You gotta talk about heart wall thickening. Now, you already know what I'm talking about if you stuck up, stuck around for my other videos. The two, the two things, guys, the two things which always kill bodybuilders are what? You know, nine times out of 10, why do bodybuilders die or athletes or fitness people, why do they die from anabolic steroid misuse or abuse? Either plaque buildup in the arteries or what? Heart wall thickening. All right, we already talked about plaque buildup and how Trembolone, you know, arguably is on the same level of 
uh, plaque buildup in the arteries and cardiovascular diseases, DECA. Can I prove it's just as bad as DECA? I can't, but guys, honestly, based on what, what we know, I would guess it is. All right, I guess it's just as bad as DECA. Having said that, moving on to heart wall thickening, I'll explain this in 30 seconds for those of you that have not watched any of my other Unleashed videos. Anabolic steroid, misuse or abuse, what happens? Not just, not just are those anabolic steroids or testosterone going to circulate through the bloodstream and grow skeletal muscle. The heart is a cardiac muscle full of androgen receptor sites also. Anabolic steroid from testosterone or anabolic steroid misuse or abuse is going to hit the heart tissue, bind onto it and do what? Literally hypertrophy the heart. Now this causes a problem, right? <clears throat> this causes a big problem. Why? Because I'm sure you guys can already guess this if you don't know what I'm talking about. A bigger, strong, or hopefully you'd be able to guess, a bigger, stronger heart does not mean a more efficient or effective one. Just like a car. The bigger you make that engine, the heavier it's going to be, and it's not always going to be able to get to be more efficient or effective in terms of getting to where you want to be. It's the same exact thing with the heart muscle. Anabolic steroid misuse or abuse, skeletal muscle hypertrophies, but heart is also going to hypertrophy depending on dose and also length of uh, substance abuse. So the heart hypertrophies, your heart gets bigger and stronger, great, right? Well, guess what? That left ventricle, yes, it's bigger and stronger, but the heart wall itself is thicker, thereby doing what? Making it harder for the heart to eject more blood out. So yes, you're going to literally have a bigger and stronger heart from using anabolic steroids, but the problem is, is that that chamber is going to have a harder time ejecting the blood out. Why? Because the wall is thicker. Think about like a balloon. If you had a super thick balloon, it'd be harder to, you know, uh, it'd be harder to fill it with air. Okay, it's the same kind of example with uh, with the heart. So usually, guys, it's a it's a combination of plaque buildup in the arteries and heart wall thickening, which kills bodybuilders. You know, if I had to pin it down to which one's worse, definitely the plaque buildup. But this has to be talked about in Trembolone, guys, especially considering the anabolic energetic rating or ratio. Uh, we are talking significant damage. All right. Moving on in the cons. Trembolone destroys brain. Wow, what a wonderful uh, uh, con to talk about. I'm being completely sarcastic here. People really didn't know this at all when Trembolone came out. But there's this one Chinese study I saw and another study I saw, I was looking at today, where what? Neurodegradation. What does neurodegradation mean? It means neurologically you're declining. Why? Trembolone destroys the brain through neurodegradation, causing Alzheimer's disease, dementia, and other problems. Why? Big why. Everybody wants to know why. Why? Easy. Trembolone has been proven to kill cells, literally kill the cells in your hippocampus. Hippocampus, hypocampus, whatever you want to call it. Whatever your teacher called it. I think my teacher called it a hippocampus. All right? But Trenbolone literally, directly kills cells in the hippocampus. Not debatable. Crazy. All right? So not only does Trenbolone kill cells in the hippocampus, and what does the hippocampus do? Many of you guys probably already know what the hippocampus does. It is responsible for storing memory. It's, the, it's basically the memory transfer station in the brain. You know, short-term to long-term memory, and such and so forth. So in the hippocampus, when talking about being able to store memory, store short-term, long-term memory, memory, and sort information in the brain, Trenbolone kills the cells in the hippocampus directly. So when I tell you it can cause Alzheimer's or dementia or other problems, you should be nodding your heads right now and saying, yeah, I see why. And I'm going to post this study, guys. I'll post this study on this channel for you guys to see. All right, I'll do this in another video. And maybe I'll just flash the study so you guys can see. 
Uh, you know, I wish I could make this up. I wish I was making this up. Uh, because there's probably a lot of people that have, a, there's been a lot of people, including, you know, this person I know that I've talked about before, uh, that have abused, wildly abused Trenbolone. So I wish I could be making this up, but, but I'm not. This is completely true, unfortunately, all right? So now, so kill cells in the hippocampus directly. We talked about that. What else does it do? Uh, Trenbolone causes waste production buildup. So waste builds up in the brain. So not only, so isn't, isn't this great? Look at, so Trenbolone, Trenbolone not only kills cells in the brain, in the hippocampus directly, but also cause, causes waste to build up, waste products to build up in the brain. And in particular, we're talking about amyloid beta 42, it's kind of a weird name, and arguably others. So the bottom line is, is that you're killing brain cells directly and you're building up waste products in the brain. There's some evidence that this, this is due to uh, not the lymphatic system, but the glymphatic system impairment. That's the system, the glymphatic system is the system responsible for flushing out waste toxins from the brain. So not only do we have glymphatic system impairment, uh, but we have it directly building up waste products, possibly by another route as well. Now I want to touch on this China study. There was a study done by the Chinese. All right, we already talked about this first. We talked about uh, this evidence first, but there was a study done by the Chinese <sighs> in by where the Chinese found that Trenbolone directly causes dementia, all right? It, not a good thing. So, you know, props to the Chinese for doing this study to begin with on Trenbolone, all right? And on, you know, brain function. So from there, from the Chinese study, and also from what we've already talked about, we have a good reasoning or hypothesis we can make based on why Trenbolone is no longer approved for human use. And why, guys, in general, Trenbolone was pulled from the human market to begin with. A lot of people think that Trenbolone, uh, guys, was never marketed or approved for human use. That's not true. Trenbolone was briefly, but it was pulled from the market. And talking about all of these effects on the brain, which are numerous, we've already talked about them in detail, but talking about all these effects on the brain, including the Chinese study, uh, guys, we have a good reason. <laughs> Uh, why Trenblone uh, was probably pulled from the human market, all right? So as of right now, Trenblone is really only approved for veterinarian use for what? Beefing up cattle and livestock and animals before they get slaughtered, pretty much, all right? So guys, you might think we're done with the cons, but we're not. We got to keep going because this is Trenblone, all right? We got a lot of uh, unfortunate things to talk about yet. Let's keep, let's keep rolling. Here we go. Trenbolone unleashed. I'm not, I'm not pulling any punches here. Trenbolone, kidney damage and high blood pressure. Trenbolone can easily, easily cause kidney damage. Why? Via high blood pressure. I've seen people talk about beginning Trenbolone and their blood pressure shoots through the roof. Guys, if your kidney or if your blood pressure gets too high for too long, you have these little nephrons inside the kidneys. The nephrons inside the kidneys are what? They're like these little balls. These little balls or bulbs kind of look. They kind of look like, a, you know, like a like a ball with the with the uh, tubes coming out of them. That's basically what they look like. Well, these nephrons in the kidneys, which there are tons of them with the tubes coming out. These little balls with the tubes coming out. The the balls themselves are called the nephrons. But anyways, inside the kidneys, these nephrons. Guess what happens? They get damaged they actually get damaged from the high blood pressure. And what is this gonna do? This is going to basically do what? Cause kidney damage, because you're gonna destroy the nephrons and you're going to completely limit and not just limit for that matter, but decrease the amount of blood you can filter out. So we are talking total kidney damage from trombolone. Not just possible, but very probable depending on what you're doing, you know, together with diet, nutrition, training, and what your overall, what your blood pressure is, all right? 
Of course, even just not sleeping by itself shoots up your blood pressure. But we'll talk about, you know, it's, it's probably just a, a wagon load of things. You know, it's, it's Trembolone itself jacking up your blood pressure. It's probably also you get increased from the, from the lack of sleep, metabolism. It's just, Trembolone's a nightmare, all right? It is, it is a, a chemical nightmare, all right? Let's keep going. Let's keep going in the cons. We're not done yet. Uh, we talked about that. Let's talk about sexual dysfunction. Trembolone causes sexual dysfunction. Let's talk about uh, physical. Trembolone causes sperm mutation. I recall seeing a very uh, problematic study with Trembolone. I think, it, I think it was in animals, by the way. But anyways, it's beside the point. Trembolone causes sperm mutation. It literally, Trembolone is, is such a wicked hormone that basically it can mutate your sperm directly, all right? And, 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 and change, uh, change not just like, uh, not just give it, you know, internal mutations, but where you're talking like completely irregular and deformed sperm, all right? Which, by the way, is not a good thing if you want to have children. All right, so we talked about this. Now let's talk about, uh, um, let's talk about, let's talk about not just, uh, uh, sexual dysfunction in terms of testicles, but let's talk about, uh, why in general. So why is there sexual dysfunction? It has to do with this guys. Trembolone is able to bind onto progesterone receptor sites. Let me say that again. A lot of people don't know this. Trenbolone itself is able to bind onto progesterone receptor sites. Now, if you know anything about progesterone, put it this way. When women take progesterone replacement, a lot of women are taking progesterone replacement uh, in the form of either birth control or hormone replacement or other things. Well, when a, when a woman has high progesterone, guess what it does? It drives your mood through the roof. We are talking anything from anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, extremely irritable, mad. Progesterone is a terrible hormone to have too much of, all right? And so, and, and like it is with women, so it is with men. So if progesterone gets too high, what happens? Not just with women, with men, all right? If progesterone gets too high, what are you gonna have? Severe, and by severe, I mean severe mood problems. Well, guess what? Trenbolone, this lovely hormone, also binds onto the progesterone receptor sites. Yay, wonderful, right? So the more you take, the more wicked progesterone side effects you're gonna have. Well, guess what? Progesterone also has a, has a huge negative impact on sexual function, and this is where se the sexual dysfunction is gonna come from. All right, so we already talked about sperm mutation, and in general, sexual dysfunction is going to come from this wicked increase in progesterone. It's not going to come from, uh, like when talking about DECA, it's not going to come from a low androgenic component or trembolone converting into a low androgenic component. It's going to come from uh, the progesterone binding, which, let me tell you, is going to be wicked. All right? So, uh, and in general, in general, any increases in progesterone above the normal range are going to have problems. Uh, you know, the only variable is how much. Moving on to the cons. Trenbolone, possible prolactin increases. Now I've, you know, I have seen, I have, I have seen evidence of this, the possible prolactin increases, but medically I would argue that people are still split on this. But even for getting the prolactin increase, it is pretty much unarguable that Trenbolone will bind onto progesterone receptors to some extent. And again, uh, the more you take, the worse this is going to get. Moving on to the cons. Let's talk about mood. You guys probably already knew this was coming, all right? Let's talk about mood, okay? Trenbolone, mood swings, crazy mood. What are we talking about? We are talking about Trenbolone, anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, paranoia. Altogether, you feel miserable 
absolutely miserable. Not just this person I know who is, you know, again, this person I know taking 1,000 milligrams of Trenbolone per week, not only was he completely and totally miserable, but basically he was pretty much unable to get ha be happy no matter what. He could have a perfect day, beautiful girlfriend, nice car, you know, everything could be perfect in his life. And he'd still be miserable because he's on trend. All right, so the thing is, guys, if you want to, if you want to be miserable, if you want to be completely miserable, unhappy, and uh, you know, just have mood problems in general, Trembolone is 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 key. All right. Do not take trend. Okay, this is what I'm telling you. Don't take trend. So you know, and I would I would chalk this up not just to the androgenic component. It's a, it's a mix of the crazy high androgenic component with the progesterone binding effect. That's what I'm, that's what I am, you know, my professional opinion is that it's the, it's the high androgens combined with the wicked nasty effects of progesterone. It's going to give you, like I said, you know, trembling is going to make you anxious, paranoid, uh, you know, depressed. Uh, it's going to make you, it's going to make you miserable. And like, you know, like, like this person, I know a thousand milligrams of trembling per week and, and many other people, guess what they say? I can't be happy no matter what. I take trend, you know, I could go do this. I could do this. I could walk through the park in the sunshine and the flowers and the rainbows and you're miserable. You can't be happy. And fun, you know, funnily enough, uh, on a humorous note, I guess what women talk about when, uh, when they take, uh, what is it? Too much progesterone containing birth control. They can't be happy no matter what. Their quality of life's miserable. So, I think it, it's it's I mean it's 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 a it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare when this high progesterone uh, binding effect comes together with the high androgen. You it's a it's a mess. You know you're still going to get this invincibility feeling, but you're going to be miserable. All right. All right. Uh, let's see here. Trenbolone is going to make you extremely reckless. On Trenbolone, you pretty much don't care about anything. Again, this person I was, you know, this person I've been talking about here with, uh, you know, high doses, low doses, extreme fat loss, everything. This person I'm talking about here, you know, in terms of reckless behavior, you don't care about anything. All right. You just, you just don't care. You, you just, you don't, it, uh, it you, nothing makes you happy and uh, you don't care about anything. So it, it's, you know, you could be, you could be like, you know, I'm going to drive a hundred on the highway. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You just don't care. You know, you just makes you extreme tremble and makes you extremely reckless. And I have heard this from other people. So, uh, <laughs> and guys, you can go to, you can go to Reddit or you can go to all these other places and you can hear people talk about their experiences with tremble and how miserable it made them. Okay. Tremble is a relationship destroyer. You know, it, it is, it is. You know, the, the people around you are going to suffer just as much as you. Well, okay, I'll tell you that much. Moving on to the cons. Trembolone. You guys have been waiting for this. Trembolone. Death somnia. This is what I'm calling it. Trembolone is going to give you death somnia. I would say Trembolone is going to give you insomnia, but that's not severe enough. Okay? With Trembolone, it's death somnia. What do I mean by that? If you take Trembolone... Even a little bit, even at a low dosage of Trenbolone. We're talking, you know, under 200, even a low dose of Trenbolone. You're going to have insomnia. The more you take, the worse it's going to get. The person I know that was taking over 1,000 milligrams of Trenbolone, no sleep. You know, needed multiple drugs to be able to even get a couple hours of sleep. Trenbolone is, is wicked, nasty. Again, we are talking extremely high what? Extremely high androgens and also... What? Trembolone binding to progesterone receptor sites, acting or uh, si simulating or giving similar effects to high progesterone levels, which we talked about how nasty that was. Moving on to the cons. Okay, I guess not. We are done with the cons. Guys, Trembolone Unleashed, we've covered all the pros, we've covered all the wicked cons. Let's talk about dosage. Guys, Talking about dosages, even though in, in medical studies, 
And when Trenbolone was approved for human use, even though Trenbolone was used 200 to 300 milligrams per week, or not per week, per month, even though Trenbolone was used, you know, 200, 300, 400 milligrams per month, even though that's what it was used for when it came out on the human market, and you could argue safely at those dosages, this is what I'm going to tell you straight off the bat. And I really hope that you take my professional opinion here. And also, uh, if you have an endocrinologist or, you're, or if you have a good doctor, whether it's through Prometheus, HRT, or any other doctor uh, that knows hormones. But my professional recommendation opinion to you is this. In fact, I'm going to beg you guys right now. Guys. Please, I'm begging, I'm literally begging you guys. Guys, please, I'm gonna tell it how it is. There is no safe dosage of Trenbolone ever to use, okay? Again, literally guys, this is me, this is Seth Spartan begging you to listen. There is no safe dosage of Trenbolone ever. Do not ever use this compound. I cannot and will not give you a dosage. And again, even though Trenbolone in medical research and literature, when it first came out and it was on the human market for a little bit, even though it was used at you know, 200, 300, 400 milligrams per month. Guys, bottom line, it's not on the human market for a reason in any country that I'm aware of. Why? There is no safe dosage. Never use this drug. I'm begging you, never use this drug, okay? It is not worth it. From all the effects on the brain, to the heart, to the kidneys, it is, it, it, it. I don't care if you have a Mr. Olympia show coming up. Is it worth damaging your brain? Is it worth doing damage to all of these other systems in your body? Guys, it's really not. It's not. Don't use Trembolone. I'm not giving you guys a dosage because there is no safe dosage. All right, guys, having said all that, moving into any extra additional information that you need to know. This is it, this is the take home. Are you ready for this, guys? Trembolone is pure evil. All right, how's that for any extra additional information? All right, bottom line, Trembolone is pure evil, it is the great evil, literally, all right, of any anabolic steroid. You know, halotestin's bad, but Trenbolone takes the cake for the worst anabolic steroid ever. And the thing is, is that, you know, in terms of muscle building and fat burning, you can build more muscle. You can, if you compare high, let's just, let's just go performance for a second. Let's say, let's say we compare 2,000 milligrams of testosterone to 2,000 milligrams of Trenbolone, all right? In fact, I know somebody who took 2,000 milligrams of Trenbolone a week. I think it was for seven, eight weeks, all right? All right, and I know this person too. So I'm going to tell you this, period, plain and simple. Here, here it is. Let's talk about performance for a second. How's, how about this for extra additional information that I'm about to tell you? Comparing Trenbolone, 2,000 milligrams, to testosterone, 2,000 milligrams. 2,000 milligrams of testosterone is going to build more muscle than 2,000 milligrams of Trenbolone. Period. Okay? I already talked about, you know, Trenbolone at higher dosages does not build muscle. Your body goes catabolic or far more catabolic uh, with high dosages. Your body just cannot, your body almost just, just doesn't know what to do. It shuts down your body. You, You'll still get ripped and shredded at, you know, at 2,000 milligrams of Trenbolone, you're going to rip off every piece of body fat. But guess what? That, that crazy metabolism effect that you're going to get from Trenbolone, along with all the other problems with progesterone and, and, you know, insomnia and everything else, but the greatest, arguably, you know, being uh, the metabolism problems, 2,000 milligrams of Trenbolone is going to rip off fat but you're gonna build barely any muscle of that. So again, when talking about performance, 2,000 milligrams of test versus 2,000 milligrams of Trenbolone, test is gonna build way more muscle. 
And if we're talking about fat burning, say, oh, Trembolone is such a good fat burner. Trembolone is not as good of a fat burner, arguably, in my opinion, as a drug like Anavar. Anavar is the most potent, powerful fat burning anabolic steroid in existence. And far more than Trembolone. All right. You know, we don't have human studies on fat burning with Trembolone, but I can tell you again, based on uh, you know, this person that took a thousand milligrams or this person that took 2,000 milligrams of Trembolone, I can tell you guys that milligram per milligram, Anavar is going to rip off far more fat than Trenbolone milligram per milligram. It's going to be way safer. It's going to have none, nowhere near as many negative side effects. And you can even get Anavar through an advanced hormone replacement clinic, such as Prometheus HRT or others. All right. So the thing is, guys, is that if we're talking about building muscle, you can build more muscle using safe hormones. Again, I'm not telling anybody to use, you know, I'm not telling anybody to abuse or misuse or use crazy high dosages, but the bottom line is, is that no matter what you do, there are better ways than to build muscle with Trenbolone. I don't care, you know, testosterone, Anavar, Anadrol, with Anavar being the most powerful. Testosterone being the best uh, risk to reward, okay? But there are better options for building muscle than Trenbolone. Again, I named them. Testosterone, Anavar, Anadrol. And there are better options available for burning fat than Trembolone. Anavar being number one choice, Anadrol being number two choice. So at the end, and if we're talking about strength gains, testosterone, you know, total is going to be better at strength gains than Trembolone. Uh, you know, obviously you'd have to use higher doses of testosterone, but testosterone can be utilized at higher dosages, uh, you know, uh, than Trenbolone. And I'm not telling people to use high doses of testosterone. I'm just telling you guys from a performance standpoint. All right. So whether we're talking about muscle mass, fat burning, or strength gain, there are better compounds available that, guess what, are not going to destroy your body. So here's the take home. Here's the take home message and we're done. Trenbolone. Trenbolone unleashed. Trenbolone is pure evil Never, ever use it. That's it. Guys, I'm Seth Spartan. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Please listen to what I am telling you with this drug. Trenbolone is never worth it to use it. Again, you only have one body. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And we are out of here.